I think so many of us are attracted to the idea of tiny house living through a desire for simplicity and less focus on material things in life. And that's exactly the case with this next couple we're about to visit, who traded a conventional four bedroom family home for an idyllic tiny house in the country. Hi Amelia, how are you? Hey Bryce, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yes, G'day good. Dan, how's it going? Good, mate? nice to meet you. How are you it's going? It's great to meet you and what a beautiful home you have here. Thank you. Thank you. So first of all, can you tell me what it was that inspired you to build and move into a tiny house? Lots of things. Lots um, of things. We obviously lived in a four bedroom house. We had a son who was an adult, decided to move out of house. And then in 2020, I got made redundant. So we thought, well, there's no time like the present. Mm. So we exactly. started looking at designs and that kind of thing. And we'd also talked about moving to the country for years and mm. hadn't had the opportunity to do that. So this, everything came into that one time and went, right, now's mm. the time to do it. So making the shift from a four bedroom house into a tiny home is quite a big transition. What was that shift like? It was actually all right, hey? Hmm. I mean, we had a four bedroom house, but three of the rooms were empty essentially. And I've always been a minimalist. I don't like having too much stuff around. So it was a no brainer. And you found such a lovely parking spot for the home as well. It's sort of this very idyllic country setting, isn't it? It is, yeah. We did look for quite a while. Mm. Um, we did see this place initially, probably the August. Yeah. And then it came to November and then it was getting quite close to the house. Being ready. Being ready, because the land we were going to buy, it fell through. So this place came up. And I'd always wanted to live in the pine forest. Like that had been my thing, you know, manifest a pine forest. So we come down the road, don't we? When we yep. first see this place and it's like, oh. A pine forest. A pine forest. This is where we're supposed to be. But the day you came out here, yeah. it was pouring with rain, wasn't mm. it? And even that didn't put you off. Didn't put me off. Yeah. yeah. I love rain. So I think the whole living in a tiny house thing, that made us really think about our stuff, like what mm. we had and did we really need it. So this house is kind of like a new beginning yeah, for us. Yeah, a new it's start. Yeah. a new start for us. Yeah. yeah. In so many ways. Yeah, we're yeah. in the country, which we've never mm. lived before. Mm. New job well, for you. New job for me. New business yeah. for me. It was almost like a clean slate, which is scary, not going to lie, but also a really sort of invigorating process because you start discovering new things about yourself yeah. and each other. And I can see you're definitely embracing the country life as well with a few animals around the place too. Yeah, there's ducks and chickens which belong to our neighbours. Um, we actually have a chicken as well. And we yeah. also have sheep occasionally that yeah, come and mow the lawn for us because yep. I've done that and it takes a long time, so I'd yeah. rather they did it. Yep. Fair yeah. enough too. They're more efficient at it. Yeah. And then I really like the design of the house. First of all, what size is it? Uh, it's eight metres by three metres and four metres high at the highest peak. And the house just looks so good as well. I love the stark black exterior that's beautifully contrasted with the white joinery. Yeah, we had to have a black house. I wanted to paint some rooms in our old house black, but I wasn't allowed, so <laughs> I was allowed a black, a black house. house, yeah. And the white, it just makes it pop, really. And you've also done such a lovely job of beautifying the exterior with all the lovely plantings too. Thank you. That's all me, not you. It's all you, not me. <laughs> I dig the yeah. holes and then you do the rest of And the then work. I do the rest, yeah. We actually had a friend, Scott, who was a builder. He built the steps here and the framing around the house. All that is actually removable. So when we do um, eventually buy some land that can come with us, everything in the garden is pretty much edible. We've got like lemons and raspberries. We've got a cherry tree around the corner there, rosemary, garlic growing in the beds there. Kumara growing as well. All of the things. All of the things. All the vegetables. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Soon you won't need to go to a store. No, no. That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. Well, you really have such a lovely spot here and the house just looks idyllic. I cannot wait to see inside. Can we take a look? It's your thing. Sure. Great. After you. Oh, now this is just beautiful. I love what you've done with the plants on this wall. No, oh, thank you. I love plants, as you can see, and if I could have more, I would. Plants and crystals, those are two things that you can just never go wrong with. That's right, and books. And books. I'm completely <laughs> books. with you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this house, walking in, it just has this lovely, welcoming, and very spacious feeling, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. I think it's the combination of the, the white walls with the panelling and all the windows, mm. um, and I guess like the neutral sort of lighter wood as well. Yeah, it does, it makes it feel yeah. really airy, light and airy. I think the plants help as well. Yeah. Yeah, and especially here in the centre of the home, you've got quite a lot of height as well, which definitely mm. helps. And we're not the tallest people in the world. No, no we're not. <laughs> and your lounge here looks very comfortable. It is, yeah. Yeah, we love this couch. Yeah. Um, I knew that I wanted a blue velvet couch from the get-go. 
and there is a lot of storage in the couch yeah. for all our books all the books <laughs> and toys <laughs> and toys yes yeah. One of the things that I often find in a tiny house is there's just never enough storage for books. So I love that your couch is actually filled with books. <laughs> it is. Here we've got some books up there as well. Um, some books up there too. Books everywhere. Yep. Sounds a lot like my house. <laughs> <laughs> so the storage for all my books in there as well. I've also got like a work from home desk, which is under there, which is really good. So rather than just sitting on the couch and working, I can sit at my work from home desk. Definitely having your own business. It is just so important to be able to have a dedicated space that you can set up to work in. So I really like that you've included that. Yeah, it is definitely something that was needed. Yeah, and it's quick to assemble and it's quick to disassemble and put back under the couch. Mm. And I see you've extended your lounge space with a television loft as well. Yep, we've got a little loft area up there with a couch and a TV and we can do gaming up there, we can watch movies, we mm -hmm. can read, mm -hmm. you know, because if this spot isn't comfy enough to read, we have another spot to read yeah. in. We also have another bookshelf that's actually underneath the planter box there. Perfect. And it is lovely to be able to have a bit of a separate space like that, isn't mm. it? Mm. When our son came to visit, uh, the couch up there folds out, so that's where he slept. So, you know, if people come mm. to visit, it acts as a second bedroom. Mm. Very handy. <laughs> yep. And then what a charming kitchen you have here as well. Yeah, I mean, I do most of the cooking and I, I love cooking in it. I love to come home from work and kind of de-stress by cooking dinner and it's compact and everything's easy to access mm. close by. Yeah, I really like how you've got the herb planters on the wall there too. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's another excuse to put plants in the house and also it makes it easier yeah. when we're cooking. Yep, easy, easy to get access, to. Yeah. Plenty of storage in here as well. Yep, we've got uh, overhead cupboards. Uh, for all our plates and glasses and then we've got obviously the drawers for cutlery and then we've got a pantry there with all our canned goods and spices and that kind of thing. We've got the full-size oven, um, the dishwasher or yep. the dish drawer as well. Everything you need and I love the use of the subway tiles in the kitchen too. Yeah that was one thing I really wanted was just the, the black on white yep. you know to make that addition in the house. It was just little details. Little details yeah, yeah. you probably notice it around it's sort of all the black detailing everywhere. Yeah. yeah it definitely does just make things pop doesn't it? It yeah. does yeah. And then a lovely spot for the table here too. Yeah I mean the table also folds out so you can fit more people around it. I mean I use it as a desk as well sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's a good little spot to eat your breakfast and mm. stare out the window yep. or work from home and stare out the window. Mm. <laughs> and then over the other side of the house, I see you've got a laundry set up. Yep, we do. We've got the laundry and a lot of storage cupboards there. So you can just get out of the shower and grab your clothes. Yep. Actually, amazingly fits a lot of stuff in there. And just in that little wee nook, um, I keep all my gardening gear, all my gardening books, dried herbs and that kind of thing. And then it looks like the bathroom is hiding around the corner there as well. It is, yes. Great. Can we take a look? Of course. This is a lovely and, again, spacious bathroom. Thank you. Yeah, again, you can see that we've just gone with the whole white and black theme throughout the house and plants, again, and crystals. <laughs> You've got a good size shower in here too? Yep, that was one um, thing that we didn't want to, you know, go smaller on. It's the same size shower as we actually had in our last house. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you've got the composting toilet as well. Yep, we decided to go with this composting toilet because it kind of just fit in it just sort of blends in with all the surroundings of the bathroom it certainly does and then you've got the vanity here as well yep it's actually a good size vanity a lot of storage um, and you can see that we've carried on with the black and white tiles in here as well very nice and then up here we've got your sleeping loft and a nice compact stair design to access that too yeah there's actually a lot of fun storage in there too brilliant can we head up yeah of course of course Great. after you what a cozy loft and I really like the way that you have completely enclosed this loft as well because it does just add that extra layer of privacy and make the space feel even cozier. It does, yeah. It's really nice here on those cold winter evenings. Mm -hmm. um, you just have the blinds up and you just look out the window and stargaze. Mm. And in the summer gorgeous. as well, you get a nice breeze through all the windows. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, the wall there as well, so if you're playing video games over there and I can go to bed or I can sit here and read while he's playing video games. Mm -hmm. Yep. Especially when you're living together in a tiny house as a couple, it is really nice to be able to have that layer of separation so you still can do your own thing in the house and not feel like you're mm. encroaching on the other person. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, yeah. you like your video games and I like to read. Yeah, it feels like its own little space up here. And the landing is really well designed as well. I mean, I am standing up right now, which is fantastic. Yep. Mm. It definitely makes it easier when you're going to bed at night and making the bed. Yeah. Yeah, got that extra space there. Very useful. And so how long have you been living in the tiny house now? Uh, we've been here a year and a half now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Great. And how's it all working out? We love it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're really, quiet. It is. Yeah, it's really quiet. And we're so fortunate to have, you know, the surroundings that we do and our neighbours are all just so lovely. 
after transitioning from a larger home, mm -hmm. how are you finding the experience of being in a smaller home together? I just wish we'd done this sooner. Yeah, it doesn't feel small when you're in here. And then in winter, it's nice and cozy. And in summer, you just open the doors and you're outside. Mm, exactly. Yeah. I think having the view that we do sort of, you know, you don't feel so yeah. enclosed in here. This home for us, it's just like a sanctuary. Yeah, mm. it's just like a lovely sanctuary to come yeah. home to. A couple of weeks ago, actually, we went into the city and we were there for maybe two or three hours yeah. and we both sort of went, oh my God, there are so many people. We can, can we just go home? Yeah. Let's just go home. It's just, yeah. And then when you get to the gravel road, you're just like, oh. We're finally home. Yes, we're finally home. Yeah. yeah, and then you come inside and you're like, do you hear that? Do you hear what? No. Nothing. You get in here and you just kind of <sighs> calm yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, I think we haven't had a holiday since we've been here because we mm. feel like we're always on holiday here. Mm. You just kind of look outside and it's just so relaxing and quiet, which yeah. is something we both really wanted. Yeah, and the um, river's sort of around the corner as well. So, you know, in summer we quite often take some beers down there and, yep. you know, the side of the river and go for a swim. Yeah. Nice place to go for a walk, take the dog for a walk. But just living in this house over the course of the last year and a half, we've gone through all the seasons. So you mm. start to kind of learn how that works and sort of move along with that. So, yeah, it's certainly a learning experience, mm. but it's a good thing. Yeah. Being here for us is just so calm and just so rejuvenating. What would you say that your favourite aspect of living in a tiny house is? It kind of makes you think more about what you are buying, what you're bringing into the home. Mm. We had a rule there, so I had a rule there. Yeah, you had a rule. <laughs> like if you buy something, then something else has to go. So you can donate yeah. it all. So you can donate all. Yeah. yeah. I sometimes associate clutter with like if something is really, really messy, I can't think straight. I mm. have to, you know, I have to tidy up. So having that out here, I feel way more creative and inspired than I have yeah. been in a very, very long time. Yeah, like my photography, my business writing and the same for you too yeah, yeah. i mean it's certainly a, a more creative space i can actually mentally relax more and just sit there and stare out the window and look at some trees and then do some writing or go mm. for a walk yeah there's something about being out here that just feeds our creativity and can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home including delivery um the water tanks the plumber we were probably looking at about 171 mm -hmm. thousand Great result. Yeah. And so now that you're all wonderfully settled in the tiny house, what would you say the future holds for you both now? I think we're going to stay here for a wee bit longer, eh? We love mm. it here in the community. It's just so lovely. Mm. The long-term plan is to build something and then we'll live in this while that's being built. But living in this space has made us realise we don't need to build a big house. It probably wouldn't be much bigger than this. Mm. Um, but yeah, we'll be here for a little while longer. Well, you've built such a beautiful home for yourselves here. I love all the wonderful decorations that you've added to the space and what a charming parking spot you've found. Thank you both so much for sharing Thank it with you. me. Thank you. My pleasure. Amelia and Dan have built such a beautiful home for themselves here. They talk about the space as being a bit like a sanctuary, a calm and quiet place to retreat to that fosters creativity. And being in this home right now, I really do get a very strong sense of that.